spirit come even closer, come fill us more with your love. Shabbat Hello everybody, it's great that we can be together again to share in our light service this morning. I wonder what your week has been like. Has it been a busy one? If you've been at school, everything's been winding down now, hasn't it? Getting ready for the summer holidays. If you've been learning at, um, at home, um, instead of being at school, then hopefully you've been able to start winding down as well now, ready for having a good time this summer holiday. It's all been a bit weird, hasn't it, these last few weeks, but it's been great that we can share together and join together to worship and praise Jesus. So with that in mind, we need to get, get you up off those sofas, ready to sing the songs that we've been learning over the last couple of months and to praise Jesus, because when we do that, we get closer to him and he blesses us, doesn't he? So up you jump and let's do some singing. I can raise my voice and sing You 
we've been learning all about the armour of God. Can you remember what each of the parts are? See if you can say them along with me. The first one was the belt of truth. That's buckled around your waist. The second is the breastplate of righteousness. The third one was all about your feet. And in the Bible, it says that your feet will be fitted with readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. That was quite a long one, that one. Then we have the shield of faith and the helmet of salvation. That was the last one we did. Today, we're going to be learning all about the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Hmm. Where do we find the word of God? Ah, that's it. It's in the Bible. The Bible is our sword of the spirit. Knowing what God has to say is really important, isn't it? The Bible is one of the ways that God speaks to us. And using this is another piece of the armour. We find in the Bible words from God that are words of comfort, encouragement. Sometimes there's a warning but there's lots of ways of how we can praise him, how we can pray to him. We can find out all sorts of things about God in the Bible. And knowing verses and real stories about people who lived, in, who lived at the time and believed in God and looking in the Bible to learn all about Jesus' time on earth, all of those things help us today. We're going to watch a video now. And this is all about when Jesus went into the wilderness and Satan tried to tempt him. He tried to tempt Jesus. Jesus used God's word to respond to what Satan was saying to him. Let's see what happens. Come and see the temptation of Jesus. This is Jesus. Hey -oh. 
who is the Son of God and the Savior of the world. Jesus was born in Bethlehem and grew up in Nazareth, where he grew in wisdom and favor with God and man. Oh, I see. Jesus was baptized by John, and God showed John that Jesus was his chosen one. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness among the wild animals. Oh, hey there, friend. Oh, my God, how many products are going to be? Oh, what's up with the sheep? For 40 days and 40 nights, Jesus didn't eat anything. So he was hungry. Satan came to him and said, Hey, if you are the son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Jesus knew God's word, and so he answered, No, the word of God says people don't live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. And so Jesus passed the first test. <laughs> then Satan took him to Jerusalem and said, If you are the son of God, jump off. Aww. For the word of God says he will order his angels to protect you, and they will hold you up with their hands so you won't even hurt your foot on a stone. Wait. But Jesus said, the word of God also says you must not test the Lord your God. Now. And so Jesus passed the second test. So Satan took him to the peak of a high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and all their glory. Satan said, I will give it all to you if you kneel down and worship me. But Jesus said, get out of here, Satan, for the word of God says you must worship the Lord your God and serve only him. <laughs> then Satan went away and angels came and took care of Jesus. And so Jesus passed the third and last test. Spend some time to think about verses or stories from the Bible that encourage you, that you think, actually, this is what God wants to say to me today. I've asked a few of my friends to help me out. Um, so here are a collection of our favourite verses or stories from the Bible that mean a lot to us and that we know we can use these to help us in our lives today. My verse is 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7 that says God did not give us a spirit of fear but of power of love and of self-control when Joseph was in prison the Lord was with him he showed him kindness and granted him favor with the prison warden my favorite story is David and Goliath because God helped David with it for I know the plans I have for you declares the Lord Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed. His compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. My favourite story is Noah's Ark. I lift my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Hi everyone. The sword of the spirit this week's uh, piece of God's armour. Uh, we're going to have a look at uh, seeing what we can make all about uh, the sword of the spirit. Uh, but first of all, I wondered what God meant by a sword of the spirit and what's a real sword like? Well, we happen to have a real sword in our house. Look at this. Wow, it's big, isn't it? It's shiny. Not too sharp, but very sharp at the point. It's heavy. It's actually a replica of um, Peter, King Peter, High King Peter from Narnia. Uh, it's, it's a replica of his sword and it's got Aslan's head on the handle here. So this is a real sword and this is deadly. It will do somebody a lot of damage and um, 
soldiers and knights use swords to uh, to protect, to defend and to take ground. I wonder what God wants us to have, why he wants us to have a sword of the spirit. And is it a real sword? Put that down. So no, the sword of the spirit isn't a real sword, but it's still powerful and it still uh, has the job of defending and taking ground and having lots of authority. So let's see how we might be able to make a sword. Right then, uh, I've got some things out here. I've got some card, some A4 card. I've got felt tips and some glue and some stickers. And um, what I've come up with is making a sword like this. So it's not a sword where we're going to hurt anybody, but the sword of the spirit is all about God's word. The words in the Bible. This is my little Bible. And this is a great Bible that I love uh, using with younger people. God's word is powerful and active and it's got lots and lots of power from Jesus because it's Jesus's words. So let's make a sword. Um, if you get a piece of card, an A4 piece of card, and you fold it like a concertina, you fold it in half and then half out that way. And what I've done is to draw a sword on here and you need some parts that touch at the sides. Um, so I've made the handle, the crossbar of the sword and I've made it touch here so that when we cut a shape it hold, it will hold together just like this one here. I'll show you. There we go. So I've actually made four swords here that constitute them together. Oops, a daisy. God's word just fell down. And what you can do when you've cut it out, um, you could decorate it. And um, here I found, I just had a look in my craft box and I found some really shiny paper because we've just looked at that real sword. They're really usually made of metal, aren't they? And they're sparkling. I've put some stickers on the handles. And one thing that we've discovered is that God's word, which is the sword of the spirit, God's truth, you could re rearrange the words and it could be God's, God sword. So I've written on here God's word and God sword to remind us that God's word is like a sword. And on the other side, I've on each of the swords, I've put a verse from the Bible. And it says here, one of the verses I've written here, and you can use it like a sword of with power. Jesus is the same yesterday, today and forever. And that's from the book of Hebrews. And we can declare it. And another one here. God did not give me a spirit of fear, but of power, of love and of self-control. And again, here I've put God's word and God's sword. And when, when Jesus died on the cross, the cross was like a sword that went into the ground and it changed history forever. So that's really powerful, isn't it? Um, so you could make a sword like that and you could find some words and verses from the Bible. And when, when you feel like there's a lie in your head that, that Satan might be putting there to put you down or to tell you something that um, might be encouraging you to do something that really wouldn't be very good to do or might hurt somebody or might even hurt you, 
you can look for a truth in God's word and say, no, this is what God says. And that will powerfully destroy a lie. So have a go at making your God sword. again today we hope you've enjoyed learning a little bit more about the sword of the spirit and the way that God gives us his word in the bible to help us on our daily walk with him I'm just going to pray now so if you want to close your eyes and you can say amen with me at the end if you agree with what I say dear Lord Jesus we thank you that you've given us so many different things to to help us get to know you better and to help us with our walk with you Lord Jesus, help us to remember um, all the different things that we've learned over the last few weeks 
um, that make up the armour of God and help us to, to use these every day um, to draw closer to you and to live the life that you want us to live. Lord, help us to um, keep chatting and catching with you, to keep getting to know you better and to keep um, changing and developing into the people that you want us to be, Lord Jesus. We pray this in your precious name. Amen. We thank you for joining us and we hope to see you again next week. Until then, we hope you have a fabulous week and um, we'll see you soon. Bye.